It's a debate that has been going on for a long time. It started out as a debate between Kwame Nkrumah and Nyerere. Nyerere was talking about building blocks, regional building blocks, and then next step would be continental. Nkrumah talked about one jump straight away to the United States of Africa. We must sequence it by first talking in terms of national independence so that we engage into production that puts value at first a national level, local level, then at a regional level. In East Africa, we are a population of nearly 120, 150 million people, good enough market for us to add value within the region. And then when we are competitive, then we can open up. I think it is a process that recognizes, first of all, that there are certain challenges that we have faced as African people. Even within Africa, you have inequalities between regions, within regions, between countries, within countries. And um, any African continental trade framework must, by necessity, understand that these structures exist and there is a deliberate effort to address those structural um, questions so that the transformative aspect of it comes from moving away from those structures that has made us unequal or oppressive or marginalized economically, politically, socially. Uh, one of the key elements of a uh, very radical uh, trade agenda for Africa is uh, an agreement that responds to the people's needs, people's livelihoods, issues of equality, gender responsiveness. It also responds to production and increased participation of citizens across the continent within the, the, the realm and spheres of governments. Okay, we want to open up. We want Africa to trade freely. Because our own intra Africa trade is what? 12%. Among ourselves. Why are we trading at the rate of 12%? Exporting our raw minerals, our raw products, our primary goods to Europe, to China, to Asia, to whoever wants to trade with us. So we are building the other people's economies. And it's important for us to start to reflect. How can we add value to our products, to our minerals? What we see the CFDA doing is basically saying we can sell between each other, mm -hmm. but the challenge is we are all producing essentially the same thing. Um, in the new framework, we'll be seeking to transform our production as well as our consumption patterns. So, building our capacity to hook into the industries that majority of our people are benefiting from, for example, agriculture. We need to transform agriculture to become smart, uh, to become aware of the climatic changes, to become aware of value addition, so that there is a value chain of uh, production that is benefiting the majority of our people. We already have commitments through the WTO, through the Economic Partnership Agreements. And some of those have aspects that are obstacles. And we have to think smartly of how either to think through those processes and say how do we organize in order to be able to trade within Africa and then trade with others as well. But also, more importantly, if we need to renegotiate some of those um, agreements, we must accept that reality and we must go back to our partners and say look based on these realities on the ground and based on the needs of our people based on the imperatives of transforming our continent we need to sit down and renegotiate what does an agreement do for the parties we have to go back down to the basics of what is the purpose of us getting ourselves into agreements is the market, first of all, large enough to sustain itself internally? Is the market, as well, able to import from within the region? And is the market still large enough to have a third party coming in from an international level? 
So if that market is, first of all, large enough for the three parties or stakeholders within the same space, how will you come to the space of ensuring that all parties are able to feed into the same market and sustain themselves and sustain the market? I think number one is to step back and look at the agreements that we have already signed and the ones we negotiate. Look at them in terms of are they addressing these issues? Do we need to stop any agreement from being implemented at the moment? That's, that's one of the options. So that first put them aside, prioritize as, 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 as a nation and as a continent or as a region, and look at what are the key elements that we need to pick out of this agreement. Trade really provides an opportunity, provides a vehicle for articulating uh, feminist ideas, uh, mainly because uh, th there, are, there are many women who are involved in trade at different levels. And, and I think that their experiences uh, can actually be central in shaping the trade agenda in a way that it actually addresses those issues that concern women. We must understand that um, men and women are impacted differently by different policies and so we shouldn't be gender blind. And then go beyond that um, affirmation to say how are women involved in, for example, production and how is that going to impede them from actually then making the leap forward. And so if we are able to do that sort of analysis, it will help us then to come up with clear and concrete strategies to ensure that women are not left behind. When you talk about feminism, it's basically taking the concerns of responding to marginalization of formation to a level which all society, when it's reconstructed, can benefit from. Permanent to basically reorganize society away from patriarchy and away from a power based oppression in a way that everybody can benefit. We as African people, we have no choice. We have to agree that women are equal and we must fight for women as well. And, and to me, that is the basics of what feminism is. So if we truly want to transform, and we do think about transformation as moving away from our past oppression, marginalization, exclusion, to one which is more inclusive, which is more equitable, which is more participatory, then we have no choice but to use a feminist approach as well.